know that you can have Kanban boards in MS Project. If you are a group member, a team leader, or a project manager, it's really a flexible tool, easy to use, and it's interesting for many projects. It's Christian from Vision 6D, and we are going to look how to add that tool, your tool case as a project manager. So I'm here with the MS project. It's already an advanced uh, situation. We are going to start from scratch here. I'm creating a new project. And we are going to look for a specific view, which we don't see here right now. We have to go to more views. And we find here the task board. You see that we have different columns. We have here not started. It's where we put the tasks which are part of the backlog. Then there is the second column, which is here, which is the next up. And after we have in progress and then done. So this is really a basic Kanban board. I'm in the situation where this is a support team of an IT department and they have tasks like here, install a new PC for Christian out. As a support, they have also support tickets. And for example, um, there is a PC issue at HR. This is the second task. And Mr. Fister is complaining slow PC. These are different tasks. At the moment, they are just standing. The group didn't commit to any work at the moment. I added a few tasks. And now, like every day, the team is meeting. It's a group of three people doing support. One is dedicated to urgencies, things that you cannot plan that happen as they are happening. And the two others, they can follow this flow. So they will discuss and decide that they will go with preparation for the PC for Christian. Some icons disappeared on one PC, so someone has to go after this. It's important. Uh, the PC of Mr. Pfister is slow, so they will also do that. Like every day, they need to validate the, the backups. And then, yes, they need to order three new smartphones. And there is a new version of the ERP where it's important that they test it with their browser. And they also need to change the printer at the accounting. And here, an important issue, somebody at the HR department lost some files. So they have to go after this and uh, check it. So this list, it's set in a priority order. So they will take those um, tickets, if you want, or cards, one after the other one. So from this point, the team is committed to do those tasks. So it's why we call this point the commitment point. The team has decided to reorder a bit the, the list here. The work starts and the first person is taking the preparation of the PC for Christian. The second one, he is going to change the printer for accounting. And the third is taking care of the lost files for HR. After a while, the one that is preparing to change the printer notice that he has the wrong cable, so he cannot go ahead with his task. He can now take the next task, which is ordering of three smartphones, which he does. You see that we are here in a situation where one person has two tasks at the same time, while the others, they are just working on one. With Kanban, there is a limit. It's the limit on work in progress. You set it yourself, that limit. It's not MS Project that will set it for you. In our case, we set the WIP limit 
to two elements per person. So they are moving ahead. And let's admit here that the last file, this was corrected. So this person now is going to take the next step. So this is how it moves. And you see that in the end here, we arrived at 100% completed task. Now those different tasks, we didn't look at the cards exactly what they contain. So if I double click on that one, you will notice that it's the task information that we know from MS Project, where you have all the fields that you can complete as you would like. The task board gives us a really good overview of what's going on. What we don't see is who is doing what. For this, we have the possibility, if I select that part here, you see to assign a resource. So if I go into assigning a resource, I have here my three resources from the support team, Clara, John, and Paul. And Clara is a really friendly woman. She is the one preparing the PC for Christian. So I will select Clara and I say assign here and you see she has been selected. So I can now close and we'll see what happens. Nothing happens because I should have done this already one step ahead. But if I pull it back here, you see that uh, the name comes out. So we can here at one view, see what's going on and who is assigned to which task. Good news, Mr. Pfister, he contacted support and he said that uh, the issue was on his side. So here, that task, you see, we can simply delete the task. So here to change the, the printer, the resource that was there was John. So I assign him also. I say close. And he received his cable so he could go back to that task and finish it. And Clara, she also finished the work with the PC for Christian. We have now the possibility to give a different look at this. If we go into reports, and we have here task boards, and I will select boards task here. You see that you have the first distribution here of the different work that has to be done. And here we find the state in which is each card or each activity or each task, if you prefer. So to make sure we, we understand, here is the backlog. Here is the next app. This third column is in progress. And that one is finished or done. So I want to change this because I would like the support group to add some tests and to make sure that they go through the test before that the task is done. So for this, I will come here and rename this column to test, you see? And test, I will say it's about 20% of the work. So I will say that when they are at that point, they've done 80% of the work. And I will, as you see here, add a column and that one will be the column done. And the column done is set percent complete and I will set it to 100%. Okay, so I've done those modifications like that. The flow has been with an added step with the column here, test. We see now that things have advanced. Once the three smartphones have been ordered, they don't need to be tested. We first need them to be delivered. And here, this can go to test. And the two people can now work on the other things. And they can now put into the committed points some additional elements that they would like to do. So we'll move all this now to further. We admit that everything is advancing. 
This task is essentially tests, and we see here other tasks. So this is the situation at one given point here, and uh, we are going to, to say that those new accounts have been tested, they've been created. Work has now advanced, and the next coming up, you see, they need to install two pieces for new people that will come to, to work. So uh, there are delivery dates for this. So what we know is that the people will start on the 20th July. So for this, we will go here inside, and you see, we will put a date. People will start on the 20th, and I will add this to the timeline. Like that, we have a reminder of those tasks, and you see that it has been added. In order to do that, they will need to order those two pieces, and they will do it as quickly as they can. So they will already start this, the third. So you see that we see now that the, the pieces have to be ordered here since they are appearing on the timeline. In the meantime here, they will also prepare the pieces once they get them. So prepare has to finish latest, I would say, uh, the week before on Thursday, which is the 16th. And we'll make this also appear here on the diagram on the timeline. So they know when they have to order the deadline, they know the deadline for when they have to finish the preparation, and they know when they have to deliver. With this, you have the combination of the task board plus the timeline, which shows important dates. So you see that uh, here in the example of that support group, we have a clear view of what's going on. And with the timeline, we also see the deadlines we have. The features that we find here, it's that we have really a good visibility. We know which task is on and in which state. In some case, we even know who is doing this. And we have here a starting point from which the team commits to do the work, then the work in progress, and here the points where the team is delivering, and it's what we call the delivery point. So a good visibility, a limitation of items in progress with the WIP limit. Those are the features of a Kanban board and a Kanban way to process projects or work. And this is also what Microsoft Project enables you. So oh, now you know that you can use Kanban, you know how to use it with MS Project. I hope you liked it, so like it. You can subscribe to the channel. This is really important because it helps me to grow. And by growing, I have new features that might also interest. Share it with your friends, comment and ask questions. I'll see you soon for the next video. Bye-bye.